can I recreate my husband's most favorite convenience food for less money, better flavor, and not much more time or effort? Welcome to episode three of this journey as I attempt homemade Dinty Moore beef stew. So Dinty Moore beef stew. I ate beef stew a lot growing up, but never Dinty Moore, never any kind of beef stew from a can. Uh, my husband, however, uh, had it occasionally growing up as a kid. It was like a special treat, Dinty Moore beef stew. Uh, he especially liked it though more uh, in his bachelor days because it was just a really easy, fast way uh, to eat something pretty good. Uh, so I tried Dinty Moore beef stew for the first time in my um, lazy uh, slash busy American week that I did about a year ago now, and I didn't really like it that much. Like, I thought it was like, okay, passable for convenience food, but that I, I didn't like that canned food taste that it had. And also I feel like homemade beef stew is not that much more time or effort. Uh, so to me, it didn't really seem worth it, but I wanted to see how much uh, more or less money it actually does cost to make pretty much the same thing, but homemade and with high quality ingredients. So on that note, let's see me make Dinty Moore beef stew. So onto the beef itself, I've got a pound and a half of chuck that I have cubed. And as you can see, I have also saved the fat right there. Any fat that I trimmed off, I've cut into little pieces and I'm gonna render that and use that instead of oil to start searing my chuck. This is actually previously frozen. Uh, previously frozen meat is a great thing to put into soups and stews because it doesn't matter that it uh, leaches water out of it while it cooks because it's just gonna help build the broth and make it taste delicious. I also have here uh, my basic uh, vegetables for the stew. It's very simple. The Dinty Moore beef stew, it's basically just potatoes and carrots. And I've added onion because uh, to not put onion in something like this is a cardinal sin. And I've also added a little bit of garlic for some flavor. Dinty Moore beef stew uses beef broth. Uh, beef broth requires like roasting beef bones and stuff like that. I guess you could use bouillon cubes. I've never really been a fan of the flavor. I just don't think it's very tasty. And store-bought beef broth also I don't think it tastes good. So I have some yogurt instead. <laughs> just kidding. It's homemade duck broth. If you saw uh, the last episode I did where I did homemade Marie Callender's turkey pot pies, I used some duck broth in that. I'm gonna use the rest of this duck broth in that. I basically reserve the scraps when I cut things like carrots and onions and celery. I freeze it and then when I have enough, uh, I combine that with uh, any chicken or duck or in this case, or turkey, any bird bones that I have left over from when I've cooked chicken. Uh, I'll boil that all together and make my own free homemade broth, so. And then I also have two Yukon Gold potatoes. I might add a third. Uh, I never really know how much to add until I've diced it, but I'm not gonna dice it yet because it'll discolor. I'm gonna add this in the last like hour of the cooking. So my first step is to take these little bits of beef fat that I have trimmed off, and I'm just gonna render them on low medium heat in my big Dutch oven. need very much fat out of this. If you're not rendering fat like I am, uh, you start with like really just a teaspoon of oil, I'd say. Beef is fatty enough, it doesn't need that much. Okay, these have turned into nice little cat treats. Or human treats, you can totally eat these too. Cracklings are delicious. Okay, beef in. Okay, at this point you could remove the beef and then saute the onions and then put it all back in. That's too many steps. I'm just gonna dump the onion in. I do this sometimes and it works out totally fine. Just wanna sweat the onions a little bit until they're translucent and then we can start adding the other ingredients and get our stew ready for the long stew. The beef needs a good three hours to really break down and become spoon tender. I'm gonna throw in the garlic too and the carrots, why not? I'm actually just impatient. I wanna get this going so that I can make my dinner because I'm hungry. Some black pepper. You could of course add other herbs and stuff in here, but this is a very simple basic stew. Okay, we are ready to add two cups of homemade broth. And I'm gonna add another two or so cups of water. Mm. 
Yes. Is that so? We're going to bring this up to a simmer and then we're gonna gently, low and slow, with the cover on, cook it for about two hours and then we're gonna come back and deal with those potatoes. my clothes and my hairstyle. No, actually it is the next day because um, as most people know, stews and the like actually tend to taste better the second day. So I decided to finish it up today, the second day. So this is my lovely stew that is basically done. It just needs to be thickened. Turn up the heat. It's already warm and steaming because I'm actually baking some bread underneath it right now. So it's made the stove warm, which has warmed the stew through. And I'm also going to heat up the Dinty More beef stew so my husband can taste test them side by side. Um, I'm just gonna add black pepper to this. That's the only change I'm going to make. He always adds black pepper to it anyway. And I put black pepper in the homemade stew and I didn't want it to be a dead giveaway. <laughs> so I'm gonna add black pepper to the Dinty More, but that's it. This is a 38 ounce can. <laughs> Looks totally the same. Actually, it does look pretty similar. <laughs> My cat thinks I just opened a can of cat food. No, baby, it's stew. You probably would like this too. Do you want a beef crackling? Nice. A little pinch of pepper in the dinty more. <laughs> no, baby. <laughs> she hates being held, so I'm trying to train her to be okay with being held by bribing her. Good girl. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I want to thicken this stew. And the way Dinty Moore thickens their stew, according to the ingredients, is with a lot of starches, and that's one thing you can do. Um, I greatly prefer using flour and butter. Um, and you can do it at the beginning of the process, like I did with the turkey pot pies. Showing too much of my kitchen. Where you add the flour at the very beginning, and, and like the butter and the flour in the very beginning when you're sauteing all the veggies and the meat and stuff, and then when you add the water, it thickens naturally. Or you can do it after the fact, like I'm doing right now, which I actually prefer because then you can kind of control uh, your thicken, you know, you can thicken it to your liking after the fact, whereas if you add it all up front, you don't necessarily know unless you're following a recipe, which I rarely do. So I just have two tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of flour. This is a trick that I learned actually quite recently, like a few months ago. And you just want to stir it until it is a smooth paste. And then once you have your paste, you just slowly add it little by little into your stew to thicken it. So I'm gonna start with probably half of it. And, ooh, I don't know if you can see this in the film, but I can see that it is already thickening a little bit. And just like if you're making a, a roux, like the reverse of this from the start, you want to make sure that you boil this for a couple minutes just to get the raw flavor of the flour out of it. You know, cook the flour basically. All right, that thickened it a little bit. I'll cook it a little longer to see if I want the rest of the thickener. I think I do want the rest of the thickener, if for no other reason than to make it like as thick as the dinty more. I want to bring this to a boil because it'll get a little thicker still when it boils. Good flavor. Pretty good. It's it's still pretty thin, especially compared to this dinty more. So I think I am going to add the rest of this thickener, which is good because that will make the calories in my stew exactly three times the calories in the dinty more. So it'll be easier to calculate the price difference. <laughs> okay, it is time to take my ciabatta out of the oven. I called it ciabatta in air quotes because uh, this is only my second time making it. The first time I made it, um, it was the most delicious crusty white bread I've ever made. You're crooked again. 
It was the most delicious crusty white bread I'd ever made, but it didn't have that like holy texture that ciabatta is supposed to have. So that's why I call it ciabatta. It's not really ciabatta unless it has that uh, quality to it. All right, the dinty more is bubbling. Both the stews are done. I think it's time to have my husband taste this. Wet. You get some too. Okay, so stew number A, what do you have to say? Well, that one was yours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you can take off the blindfold now that you know. The piece of meat I got was really fatty, so let me try again. <laughs> you can also add, like, now that you know which is which, like, you can also season it more with salt if you want. It tastes like pot roast and gravy almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. That's basically what stew is, is yeah. pot roast and gravy. It doesn't have quite the same taste, obviously. Yeah. One of the th things that makes Dinty more good is how tender the beef is, and that you do have. Mm -hmm. Once again, they're actually surprisingly close. So would you say they're pretty much the same number in the scale of one to ten? Could be, could be. They're both really good. Okay, well then what do they both get? What's What number? <laughs> mm, they're both an eight. Okay. I think mine is far superior, and Dinty More tastes like canned food, so I would give mine an 8 and Dinty More a 4, but it doesn't matter what I think, there you have it. Okay, so I think that Dinty More beef stew is not as good as homemade. Again, I don't like that canned food taste that Dinty More has to it. There's one uh, distinct difference between Dinty More and homemade, and when you look at the can ingredients list, you'll see it's this like mushroom extract thing. I think I could have achieved that by adding just like maybe a dash, like a teaspoon to a tablespoon of oyster sauce to the stew. Um, it would have to be vegan oyster sauce because my husband's definitely allergic to shellfish, but I probably could have added that for a few more cents and made my Dinty More beef stew taste a lot more like the canned version, and then my husband would have felt like they were pretty much equal. Also, my homemade beef stews that I usually make are a little more customized than the version that I made uh, copying Dinty More. I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. I usually add different root veggies. I usually add uh, some more herbs and spices. I often add some wine to it. So that would have driven the price up a little bit, but let's look first at how much it actually did cost me. So I used one and a half pounds of chuck, and this was by far my biggest expense in the entire stew. I got like a nicer quality chuck from a butcher, so it was about $8 a pound. You can usually get it at a supermarket for like three or $4 a pound, especially if it's on sale. So I spent uh, $11.99 on the chuck, the one and a half pounds of chuck for the stew. I spent 28 cents on a medium yellow onion. I spent 16 cents on two carrots, diced. Eight cents on a teaspoon of black pepper. Two cents on the teaspoon or two of salt that I added. The duck broth was free, as I explained earlier in the video, free in air quotes, because it's parts of uh, onions and carrots and celery and duck carcass that most people would throw away, but I turned it into a broth, so it's essentially free. Two cups of water, which was free. Incidentally, you can make your beef stew with all water. You don't have to add broth. Three cloves of garlic for 15 cents. Two large Yukon gold potatoes for 42 cents. Now I could have made that cheaper as well if I'd use a cheaper potato like a russet, but I prefer Yukon. And then my thickening agent, which was two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. The two tablespoons of flour were two cents and the two tablespoons of butter were 22 cents. So 24 cents for my thickening agent altogether. So my total cost for my Dinty More Beef Stew, which was 2,700 calories worth of stew, was $13.34. Now, to compare the price of my homemade stew to Dinty More Beef Stew, I have to make sure that I'm comparing the exact same volume of each stew. So I made 2,700 calories worth of stew, and it just so happens that the 38 ounce can of Dinty More Beef Stew is 900 calories, which is exactly a third. <laughs> Yay, easy math. So to compare apples to apples, divide my homemade beef stew by three. So instead of costing 13.34 for the full 2,700 calories, just 900 calories of my stew is 
$4.45. Compared to store-bought Dinty More Beef Stew is $4.99 for the same amount of calories, so my homemade version was cheaper by 54 cents. And as I said, I could have spent some more pennies here and there to add some herbs and spices. I could have spent about 50 more cents total to add a little bit of wine to the stew, which I think really would have improved the flavor. So I, I could have, like, if I'd customized my stew a bit more and made it a little bit tastier, it would have cost about the same as Dinty More Beef Stew. But now let's see how effort compares. Sometimes it's just not worth the effort. So homemade Dinty More Beef Stew, the active cooking time is about 30 minutes. And that's for me, that's because I know what I'm doing. I've made stew a zillion times. If you're a newcomer, it'll probably take you more than 30 minutes. But for, you know, someone who's used to making stew, it's only about 30 minutes of active cooking time. It doesn't take that long to chop up the beef. It doesn't take that long to chop up the carrots, onions, and potatoes, and garlic. It doesn't take that long to put everything in a pot. It does take about three hours for the stew itself to simmer. So if you decide that you're hungry at 5 p.m., well, you're gonna have to wait till 8 p.m. to eat it. So there is that inconvenience factor. But as far as active cooking time goes, it's only about a half hour. You can also make it in a crock pot so you don't even have to babysit it over the stove. But Dinty More Beef Stew, the cook time is like one minute, if even that. It's more like 30 seconds, like however long it takes to get the can opener out and a pot out, about a minute. So if you're like my husband and you think the homemade tastes pretty much the same, not that much better or worse than canned Dinty More, and you're pressed for time, you might as well get the Dinty More beef stew. And that, that hurts my soul saying that out loud. But it's nice to know that there is an alternative that is not that much more expensive and much more convenient that my husband likes just as much as my homemade cooking. Well, thank you for watching this installment in homemade junk food with the husband. And thank you to the patrons who make this another series possible on this channel and what'll I be making next time? I don't know yet. <laughs> Tune in and find out.